안녕하십니까 김경원입니다. Greetings, I'm Dr. Kim Kyungwon. I'm honored to share with you a surgical clip today. Let's take a look at the case of the day. This is a female patient in her 40s. When the patient came in, number 12 was extracted. If you look at patient history, the patient was actually living in Japan. There was actually fracture in the root side of number 12 and about one week ago, extraction was performed at a private dental clinic and the plan at the time was to return to Japan with temporary flipper. When the patient came to me, the extraction was performed just a week ago and buccal wall was remaining. I thought that we'd be able to gain a more aesthetic result if we place the implant immediately and do dual zone graft and then provide provisional. By doing this, I thought that we'd be able to get a more aesthetic result so the patient delayed returning to Japan. This is the Combeam CT taken at the initial visit in the extraction socket. There's a still buckle wall remaining. If the patient had chosen to use a flipper and to use it for a couple of months, then buckle wall would have been resorbed and even if GBR were to be done at a later date, Satisfactory results may have been difficult to achieve, therefore, implant placement and bone graft was planned. If you take a look, after implant placement, gap filling will be done and dual zone graft was planned. After implant placement, CT was taken to check the position. There's about 2.5 mm of gap towards the labial wall side, so I believe that the buccal wall resorption can be prevented by doing sufficient bone graft. With the healing abutment on, on the gap and up to the area where there's gingival dual zone graft was performed, on the labial side, there's about 2.78 mm of bone secured. Bone graft was done up to the gingival area and a temporary provisional was fabricated. As shown on the buccal side, sufficient graft was done. If this could be preserved, because there is a residual labial wall, labial wall will be preserved and there will be better contour for the soft tissue. Provisional prosthesis was utilized here. Provisional restoration was delivered, dual zone graft was done. This is the intraoral standard image and three months later, panoramic image was taken and this is seven months later. Because the patient was not living in Korea, there's a bit of a gap between time points. At seven months, CT was taken once again on the buccal side. Labial wall was observed and maintained. There was no issue clinically. After one month, Final restoration was delivered. In the area where there was tooth missing, KS implant was placed and final restoration was provided. This is about eight months after surgery. On comb beam CT, the labial wall on the buccal side was still remaining and there was about two millimeters of bone on the labial side of the implant. There was no major issues and this is when final restoration was provided after 8 months. The gingival contour looks good and there's no defect and final restoration was delivered without a problem. Let's take a look at the surgical clip. The extraction was performed one week prior, so it was not fully healed and curettage was performed. It's almost the same as immediate implant placement, therefore curettage was done thoroughly. Side cutting drill was used towards the palatal side after checking the path. 
The path was adjusted as shown, side cutting drill was used, depth gauge was used. To check the angle of the original tooth and the drilling path. The drill path was made more powerfully compared to the original tooth. 2.2 by 13 mm twist drill was used. Following the side cutting drill, full drilling was done, depth gauge was used once again, the drill path and the original tooth angle was checked. 3.5 by 11.5 mm drill was used. So 3.5 by 11.5 drilling was done. Depth gauge was used. KS3 4.0 by 11.5 mm implant was placed. The implant was positioned so it does not become deviated towards the labial side. Implant driver and torque wrench was used to adjust the depths. From the gingival height, I made sure that the implant was positioned deeper with over 5 millimeters of distance. 69-69, because that this was extraction socket, smart peg was removed. Healing abutment was placed on the labial side. There was about 2.5 mm of gap. AOS collagen was used. AOS collagen was trimmed. In the 2.5 mm gap on the labial side, gap filling was done. As mentioned by Dr. Tanao, dual zone graft concept was used. Between implant and labial bone gap filling was done, and in order to maintain soft tissue contour, graft was done up to the gingival level. Bone graft was done sufficiently with the healing abutment on. Bone graft was done so that it could support soft tissue as well. Provisional restoration was fabricated so that labial contour could be maintained nicely. The provisional restoration was made so that there is no occlusion with the antagonist. Eight months after surgery, final restoration was provided and as was shown, labial wall was still intact and gingival contour was nicely maintained. Thank you for watching.